We're delighted to have Amel Tuncey from Mastercell presenting for us today. After receiving a master's degree at the Université Louis Pasteur in France, Amel obtained her PhD in Immunology and Cellular Biology at the Université Catholique de Louvain in Brussels. She then followed a postdoctoral fellowship at a German cancer research centre where she worked in the establishment of in vivo models in mice to study the immune regulatory activity of bone marrow-derived mesenchymal stem cells. After her academic experience, she joined the research and development department of Cardio3 Biosciences, now called Celiad, a Belgian biotech company developing a stem cell therapy for the treatment of chronic heart failure. Amel was involved in process improvement and developed release and potency assays. Her expertise in academia, R&D and the biotech industry was an asset for Mastercell, where she has worked as development and project manager since August 2014. Thank you, Freya, for this very nice introduction, and thank you all for joining us at this webinar. Uh, well, during this presentation, as you can see here on the um, on the slide, I will be discussing uh, um, about a project that was uh, held at Mastercell uh, with the two other collaborators, Atersis and Terumo. And I will talk about uh, the project where we had to uh, internalize and uh, upscale uh, manufacturing of stem cell therapies using uh, the quantum uh, expansion system. This slide here is to remind you that Mastercell is a public company and in order to be compliant with some legal aspects, I had uh, to, to show this uh, message. Before moving to the description of the case study itself, let me just give you a short introduction on Mastercell. Mastercell is a European contract development and manufacturing organization. We are based in Belgium, and our mission is to help our clients, mainly cell therapy companies, move their product faster to the market. And we do so by proposing a one-stop shop uh, company where we can help our clients from uh, the tech transfer service to uh, any development, manufacturing, quality or logistic aspects of their uh, drug development. In order to keep up with uh, our mission and help our clients, we make sure to monitor and adapt to the market challenges. Of course, this is only possible by collaborating with scientific experts that can understand and help the cell therapy biotech companies in their drug development. Uh, and last but not least, master cell experts in operational know-how are also here to advise uh, our clients on how to optimize their production, uh, mainly according to uh, the GMP requirements. Another key asset of Mastercell, um, it's the 600 square meter EMEA compliant GMP facilities. You can see here a plan of the facilities and on the bottom right you can um, see the tech transfer lab where the work of this case study was performed. You see also that Mastercell has uh, five clean rooms, one QC lab and a storage room dedicated to our clients needs. I was happy to uh, participate in this project as project manager. You can see in this slide that um, this role is very central as it is actually an interface between the customer's needs uh, and the master cell internal team. Uh, we make sure that uh, we actually answer um, our client's need by gathering the best uh, team internally. As mentioned earlier in this presentation, uh, this work was performed uh, with two other partners, Atersis and Terumo. Actually, this was an ideal collaboration, especially, especially for a project where a bioreactor um, was uh, tested and uh, upscaled. The client wishing to test and optimize the bioreactor were part of the project. The bioreactor manufacturer, uh, Terumo, and ourselves at the CDMO, CDMO with the GMP know-how uh, and the GMP facility. Atersis and Reaginesis had a well-characterized cell therapy product that needed to be amplified. 
to remove was offering a bioreactor, the quantum cell expansion system, a bioreactor based on the holofiber technology. Master Cell offered the expertise on GMP cell therapy uh, manufacturing. The purpose of the product was to multiply by 10 the production of Atersis cells. Preliminary work was performed on one quantum, and the strategy was to scale out the production to running 10 quantums uh, in parallel. The harvest production of one quantum expansion system was of 1 billion cells. Logically, the run of 10 quantum in parallel would need to generate 10 billion cells. The challenge of this 10-time run uh, was the space and footprint of such equipment, the time challenge of harvesting 10 quantums and respecting the cell's shelf life, and training the team to this larger scale and ensure, of course, that all cells generated in the 10 quantums were homogeneous and comparable to the one single uh, quantum run. Concerning the space, as you can see here, the work was uh, performed in our tech transfer lab. Uh, this is a 32 square meter uh, room. Uh, that is non-classified, but uh, this is uh, not a problem as the uh, quantum system is a closed uh, system. As you can see here in this picture, the 10 quantums were disposed on tables that were 3 meter times 1.5 meter um, large. They were disposed as five quantums back to the other five uh, quantums, and the bottles you see on the front are gas bottles to, uh, and connected uh, to, to the quantum. In terms of space organization, it's of course important to keep uh, some space around the quantum so that the operators can sample and manipulate the quantum. Um, two laminar airflow were placed facing each group of five quantum expansion, expansion system. From the way the operator is dressed, you can see that this, is, this lab is a non-classified lab. But as a quantum expansion system is a closed system, the back connection and sampling can be performed even on a non-classified room. Uh, the sterility of the product uh, was not affected, as this was confirmed by the, the testings performed at the end of the, uh, of the run. I wanted to, to give you as many practical details on this study, and I think that um, I w the, the insight on the on the timelines is an important one. Um, the expansion process for each run was of six days, and is a, is represented in this slide by a blue line. Uh, the QC testing uh, were performed after the runs and represented two weeks, um, but you don't see them uh, represented here on the scheme. Um, for all the projects, we had uh, three phases. Uh, the first one con um, concerned the training and technology transfer that lasted for only four weeks. Uh, and this is, was mainly due to the bioreactor manufacturer support, Terimo, in the training and uh, also to the initial work uh, performed uh, at Regenesis and Adersis. Um, that actually made a pre-optimization of the protocol of amplification of, the, of those cells in the quantum expansion system. Once uh, the first three training runs were performed on the single quantum systems, the QC testing confirmed that the cells generated were equivalent to the client cells, and then we decided to move uh, to the next step, which was the process optimization at master cell. The runs in this phase were also performed on single quantums and um, actually uh, aimed at improving uh, the process. Uh, optimization was mainly performed on culture media flow optimization, uh, culture media consumption, and uh, cell feeding timing. Once the process was optimized, uh, the decision was taken to move to the 10 quantum scale out runs. Uh, Two of them were performed, as you can see here, in the last phase of the, of the project. Uh, you notice that the timing between the small scale, uh, the single quantum runs, and the, the 10 quantum expansion runs in parallel was only done after a week. Uh, and I think that's another advantage of choosing scaling out versus scale up. You don't change, actually, your bioreactor system, so that makes 
um, uh, life easier and uh, moving from one step to the other faster. Another important topic in the production of cell products uh, is the workload associated. Uh, in this slide, we made the comparison between a single quantum run in the bottom of the scheme and a scaled out times 10 quantum run in the upper part of the scheme. The process, as mentioned previously, is a six-day process with a day of preparation in order to pre-coat the other fibers of the bioreactor. The time required by each operator was represented by orange lines. Um, and you can see here that, in conclusion, the, the workload associated with the scale-out, uh, so if we are multiplying by 10 hour production, we are only increasing by 3.5 times the, work, uh, the workload. Uh, well, you may need uh, more time for the quoting, the daily monitoring, uh, other, other than that, the harvest had, timing had to be kept the same between the single run and the 10 quantum uh, runs. Um, as you know, this is uh, um, requested by the manufacturer and, and by the company that the freezing solution and the harvested cells stay at the same time uh, out of the quantums. So therefore, uh, an, op an additional operator was required to, to keep those uh, t uh, tight timing. I also wanted to speak briefly about the harvest day and the downstream pulling step of the, of the 10 quantum runs. Actually, no specific or additional equipment other than a centrifuge were needed to wash and concentrate the cells. Um, and as the cells, one harvested, needed to be frozen under the same timing, as for a single quantum run, uh, which was to harvest the first four, then the second four, and then the last two quantums together. Once all cells were, were washed and concentrated, they were pulled and conditioned for freezing. In this slide, you can see that in both runs, using the 10 quantums in parallel, we managed to generate around a billion cells per quantum, just as for the single quantum runs. Proliferation efficiency was not lost. And moreover, the viability of the cell was above the 95%, and the variability in cell yield was of 12%. As mentioned previously, even though the work was done in a non-classified room, we had to prove that the cells were safe and therefore conducted the usual safety tests at master cell. The sterility test um, using the Bacti alert method, the mycoplasma test using a validated qPCR uh, method here at master cell, and the endotoxin detection using the LAL chromogenic test. All three tests uh, were done according to the European Pharmacopoeia and showed to be negative for all samples. Run 7 was a single quantum run, while run 9 and 10 were 10 quantum runs. This is a proof that the handling of the back culture and sampling did not affect the closed system and generated cell cells even in a non-classified area. In order to, to prove to our client uh, that uh, the scaling out did not affect the cell's characteristic, the usual negative markers uh, were tested for, for their cells, and they showed to be negative in both single and 10 quantum runs, while their positive markers uh, had the same level of expression on both single and 10 quantum runs, again validating here the comparability between uh, both runs. Another important uh, parameter uh, to show the comparability of the cells generated from a single and a 10 quantum runs was the potency of the cells. Atesis considered their cells as potent uh, if they secreted a certain number of proteins, and uh, Regenesis performed those e testings and confirmed that the potency of the cells uh, was equivalent in both single and 10 quant quantum run equivalent. In this slide, I wanted to uh, summarize the conclusion made during this project. Well, first of all, we were very surprised by the ease of manipulation of such a bioreactor. Uh, the operators involved in the project have never worked uh, with a quantum before, 
and could easily learn and operate independently the bioreactor by, by the end of the training um, by the end of the training um, period, which was already after a month. Uh, this, of course, led to a significant decrease in the project time timelines. Um, and uh, therefore, we could run all uh, development, tech transfer, and uh, 10 quantum runs uh, in just 16 weeks. On the other hand, we also uh, fulfilled our challenge to increase the cell expansion capacity of our client by about uh, 900% in reference to a single quantum run. The Comparability studies showed that the cells generated after scale-out were equivalent in terms of safety, yield, uh, and potency to the single quantum runs. Another important element uh, concerns the workload. It is interesting to note that by increasing the labor by only 3.5 times, we could multiply by 10 the cell production. And um, I also would like to, to remind you that all the work was done in a 32 square meter non-classified -qual tech transfer lab. It's an important information for a manufacturing organization as clean room uh, footprint is essential, an essential parameter in the cost of uh, cell therapy production. The other uh, advantage we also have seen in this project is that the scale out of the process did not modify the process length and maintained it at six days. Um, and uh, th the training of the team uh, actually to move from a small uh, single quantum uh, production scale to a 10 quantum um, scale out uh, a manufacturing uh, scale uh, actually was not required as they were actually uh, ready to, to, to go from one um, one system to the other. I wanted to close this uh, presentation uh, by thanking all the people that were involved uh, in, in this project. Uh, I remind here that uh, we worked with uh, several uh, collaborators, Atersis um, and their company here in Belgium, Regenesis, as well as uh, Tirumo BCT, and I really would like to thank all of them for their help and support throughout uh, the project. I hope that you all enjoyed this presentation. I, um, I wanted to give you some uh, practical insight, uh, you know, on the on the scale out of uh, manufacturing uh, cell therapy and moving from one bioreactor to uh, running ten in parallel with the challenges that it, that it takes. Uh, of course, uh, I am now ready to answer all your questions. Um, and uh, if you need any uh, further information on Master Cell, you can also uh, contact us.